Okay, uh, dear Dhamma friends, we are going to start the second uh, Dhamma discussion or question and answer session. We have received a couple of written questions and we will start the session with the written questions. Uh, report number one, Teruan Saranai. Dear Bhante, I am a yogi who has been practicing for about four years. Most of the time I feel that I am in a peaceful place with few thoughts coming to my mind. I find that I prefer walking meditation to sitting meditation because I cannot go to a deep samadhi now. Instead, I tend to watch my breath without having samadhi. Is this all right? If not, where am I going wrong? Can you please advise me, dear Bhante? Thank you. A confused yogi. Yeah, I also are getting confused. <laughs> uh, because basically as you move forward, you don't need breath. Now assume that you are moving forward. Actually, we are using breath as a mechanism, as a means to develop mindfulness and then concentration and later to develop wisdom. And once you are developing, so breath doesn't need. So after long time, if you are still make use of breath, so that is, that is something confusing. <laughs> Uh, so you can check where are you are going ahead. So typical, I mean, if you consider the typical advancement of the procedure, if you are considering the anapanasati, mindfulness on breathing, say you are first of all establishing your attention on breath, and that is where the mindfulness is established, and after that you are trying to examine its characteristics. It may be longer, it may be shorter, it may be warmer, it may be cooler. So likewise we are examining it carefully, investigating the breath carefully. So that helps to uh, lead to a kind of an evolvement of the breath. So, so it become subtler, it become shorter sometimes. Uh, so likewise certain characteristics may evolve in the breathing cycle. And sometimes it may calm down. And actually you have to do uh, investigation carefully, investigation like uh, recognizing the beginning, the middle, the end. So likewise, you are uh, closely examining the breath. So as you move forward, the breath may calm down and even breath may disappear. And probably you may come with uh, sort of goosebumps or feeling like floating and certain uh, rapturous sensations. So those can come and you are looking at them objectively as a manifestation of the uh, feelings, Vedana. These are the pleasurable feelings, some form of pleasurable feelings, pleasant feelings. They are also feelings. So as you observing them, they also start to calm down. And uh, as we are proceeding, now there could be, I mean it is not a must, but there could be certain uh, signs, marks appear in the mind, various sanya. And there you are recognizing properly as sanya without getting deluded by them. And then they also disappear. They also calms down, fade away. And then you get a chance to look at the mind. So as you are observing the mind, it is very much relaxed observation. And you allow various thoughts to happen. And you are carefully observing them. And you are not promoting them or feeding them. And once you are observing neutrally, then they also start to fade away and you are, your mind becomes somewhat spacious, free from thoughts even. So where is the breath now? So the breath is not necessary right now. I mean, breath is the one, I mean, pave the way for us to develop mindfulness, concentration and all this clear comprehension as a tool we have used. And now assume that you are watching the mind, so you don't need to really worry about the breath unless you are becoming, getting really confused and mind again become somewhat uh, uh, distracted, then if, if you want to settle back again to develop concentration, mindfulness again, because you are now somewhat confused, then probably you can associate breath so that again you are calmed down, settled, mindful, concentrated. But if things are happening well, you don't need to return back to the breath and you can simply watch the mind and then the mind can become even empty. So this is how the things progress. So if you like to talk and uh, we can discuss further 
and otherwise if you understood uh, what i i mean what i was talking then you are fine is it clear or oh yeah her question is not her question is this your question no Uh huh. Okay, we'll proceed. Uh, who has uh, who has written the question? No. Okay. It's all right. Okay. Okay. Fine. Fine. So no problem. No problem. Don't need to get. Uh, <laughs> fine. We'll proceed. Okay. Uh, report number two, Venerable Bante. This has two parts. I'll read the first part. When meditating on the breath, I saw that consciousness was was well established in the form. Example: breath. Here too, does consci consciousness get attached to the breath? Seeing sorry, the sorry. Can you repeat? When meditating on the breath, I saw that consciousness was well established in the form. Right. Breath. Right. Hari. Yeah. Here too, does consciousness get attached to the breath? Seeing the subtle movements and vibrations in the breath, I know my concentration is getting stronger. Is this also a kind of an attachment? Please advise. Yes. Thiruvan Sarana. Yes, of course. So actually, we can't immediately avoid attachment. So we have to develop a uh, fair amount of uh, wisdom by investigating. So in order to investigate, we need some um, some kind of focused attention. I mean, assume that you have a completely distracted mind, jumping from this to that. Then you can't have the kind of wisdom that Buddha is uh, explaining. for that to have that you need to first of all develop mindfulness and concentration so that is where we are selecting what is more uh, convenient object that is the breath or whatever the bodily phenomena so as you are observing them so it is somewhat actually you are your mind is attached your mind is locked you are your main observation or main object of attention is the breath so you are at this moment not the feelings not the perceptions not the uh, say formations but the breath the forms and uh, as so so when we are moving forward uh, so as you are examining then then there's a kind of a separation kind of a disengagement happens naturally so fine it's okay now dilhara <laughs> you can be there <laughs> yeah so the point is uh so at that moment actually you since you are focusing more closely to the breath you can you can interpret this as a kind of an attachment but it has a kind of a difference by the way now now it is different from now say you are watching a movie you have a kind of an attachment to that and you are watching the breath is it the same kind of attachment you have person i mean it is not <laughs> because you can't attach to breath i mean breath is a very subtle neutral object so that is the important of the meditation practice we are I mean, we can't interpret as kind of the same kind of trivial, natural attachment that we have to various sensual phenomena like uh, beautiful sounds, beautiful songs, beautiful uh, sights, tastes, tactile sensations. Now, these are quite attractive. So, so I am getting somewhat deludedly attack attracted to them. I am attached to them. But on the other hand, if we consider the breathing. they are the you need to purposely pay attention to that purposely you are effortfully you are keeping your attention there and as a result of that now you are able to examine the breath so it is not the same kind of attachment that we are talking here but anyway i am purposely observing the breath carefully observing the breath so a primary focus is that so therefore mind is very much concentrated there so therefore i i i can't say yes it is the same attachment it is not the same attachment but it is a come some sort of a concentration where you are able to single out breathing from the various other phenomena yeah 
leaving? <laughs> Same report number two. In this process of keeping a vigil on the workings of the consciousness, can Bhante kindly explain how anatta comes into the picture? Perceptions arise without a warning. It is always caught after the perception has arisen. Teruan Saranai. Yeah, actually, more and more we are observing any of these processes. So, what we understand. So, that has basically three marks. So, we may understand their impermanent characteristic and we may understand how uh, unsatisfactory they are and how they are non-governable and how there is no any some, something, any, anything substantial. So, actually we don't need to uh, program ourselves, okay, this is sanatta, this is sanatta, I mean, not necessary. And again, uh, it is not expected, I mean, so to uh, say forcefully putting the notion of anatta, forcefully conditioning your mind with anatta, it is not expected. Rather, more you are closely observing various bodily phenomena, various feelings and mental phenomena, so automatically you may understand these three universal characteristics. I mean, I am not saying to the same extent. So some yogis may understand impermanence most prominently. So that, th that may be their, uh, say, thorough understanding. And some others may understand the, uh, the unsatisfactory nature. And some others may understand the uh, non-self nature. So non-self nature itself can manifest differently. Say for example, say you are observing ongoing process. So more you are observing it, then and you may understand they are constantly changing and you can't have kind of an intrinsic uh, core in it, anything substantial. So there you understand, okay, things are really moving, changing, arising and passing away, how can there be a soul there? How can there be a self there? How can there be a kind of a hard entity there, hard core there? So this is the understanding that we are slowly getting, which is more closer to the non-self, anatta. So let it happen naturally. Don't force yourself. I mean, we are talking them in the Dhamma sermons and in the books, they are there, but it is not expected for you to force yourself to establish on any of these, rather your idea, your duty is simply to observe in an unbiased, non-judgmental manner, you are simply observing. So any of these three characteristics, so two or three of these characteristics may be more prominent to you. And uh, actually, most probably when you are understanding non-self, you previously might have understood some amount of impermanence because since it is impermanent, things are becoming non-self. There can't be any source. There can't be any source in the sense self, soul, anything core, anything substantial. So this is what we are talking as non-self. Yeah. Teruan Saranai, Garu Swami in Vahansa. Meditation report, past week experiences. Sitting meditation with metta followed by breath meditation at the nostrils. Event number one. While observing the in and out breath, the breath becomes calm and relaxed. The body is relaxed. The mind switched briefly to the current situation. Experience dukkha as if it was an energy force permeating through everything in the universe like a vibrating energy. Event two. While observing the in and out breath, the breath become calm and relaxed. The mind switched briefly to the current situation. Experience come as if it was an energy force vibrating and spreading throughout the universe and that it covers everything. Kamma and Dukkha felt very different. Am I imagining are these experiences am I imagining are, or are these experiences accurate? Please advise Teruan Saranai. I mean, we can't uh, exactly map or precisely map our experiences with the karma, so we don't have that kind of a knowledge. So that is beyond our scope. Uh, actually, the exact mapping or the precise mapping of each and every experience towards the past karma is subject of the Buddha. So therefore, we can have kind of a guesswork. I mean, we can assume, okay, this is very much due to this kind of a karma. We can do that sort of a guesswork. 
So then that we can't be, be sure, 100% sure that it is exactly happening due to this type of past karma. So other than that, I mean, uh, things can happen due to various reasons. Maybe due to climatic issues, maybe due to the, you know, that uh, different kinds of uh, reasons Buddha has mentioned. And it may be due to the, say, the typical uh, uh, cause and effect, in the sense, uh, say, you now certain things are there, dhammata, say, the morning the, uh, the sun rises, and then the evening it goes down. So likewise, these are certain dhammata, or as a kind of a natural phenomena, so they are happening. And on the other hand, karma is one, 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 one reason, not the whole thing, just one reason. Uh, so likewise, I mean, it's, it's a bit difficult to exactly say, okay, this is due to a particular karma, but you can do a certain amount of guesswork. Yeah. Swami in Vahansa, Bhavanava digin digatama karamavatva kirimata nohakyona. Then, Anapana sati bhavanava in hita sansun karagani mata amaru yai sitami. Nitarama sita visiri visiri situvili samaga ekatuve. Sakman bhavanavat mama mehe sati dekaka pamana kaliak nirata viming hitiat. Ea tulada sita samane kala nohaka. Namut maapere iganagata u dharma karana vidarshana karamin. Situvilanda vidarshana karamin. Kopamana situvili avat. Payak pamana kaliak e tula nirata vimi. Mayana me marge veradunu tenak ed the yana then again imata kemetimi. Teruan saranai. Oh, then at the ekan apita in a situili madhyasta, terungana puluan nang, evata hunovi, evagan then again ima situinanaki vardak nehebe. Mukadang of Chitan Pasana, Enocota, Satia diunuela, Sampajane diunuela, ekane, itatena situili, wing wing machine, Handuragana puluan. Anitama evata mulanovi in Nagatia, capital etila tienoni. I mean, at long a pick apart to mock at a best suit, him, sit down to pass out the best suit. When they are a hite, pen and they will hurry mulaka and a suli, hurry one check, one one chakari. They took a pino danuatum, a tahu in the puluam pronata, ready. Then a piece of Kayano Pasanawa, Vedran Pasanawa, Karhaya, no cotta, a pita, a tino ectaran the maker, a hekia walk. A bit of puluang yams is doing a kim, beharavela, is doing a diha, nidiction ekran. Take Tamay Api Satipatani Tuling Labaneka Pradhana Ani Sansayak, Api Samaning in Devalula Bahagin, Deval Deval Valin Kene Khadagin, Deval Mama Karagin, Addakim Mama Karagin in Then Api Ginagana Satipatani Haraha, Bibida Kara Deval Sid Dena then me Usmagani Makinik Sid Dena I Kaila Am Si Addakima. Make a Magi Karagan Natu Matapulwan then Kim Patakrila Balan. Pimbi Maklim said, No, I can patter like a balana pulwa. Kai Vedana while Hatagan, no, I can patter la balana pulwa. To remind me, patter la balana belma, parato belma Tanikarama, I can satipatanning a piganagan like a Pradhana Kusalatavia. To your hekia, Vapita, Dunuenova Kayanu Pasanais, I had a Kalyak near the Venakota. It and a Kai Vidakara Vedana Hataganos, Vidakara Sang Vedana Hatagano, the Hadu Lakshana Matueno, Happy Ekakat Magi Karagan Netu, we want to pet again and balang in Nomiva, Venus in a hetti, Hatagan Hetti, Natu in a hetti, Harinia Magi Nimivagi, and it can give the Habalang in Novagi. The Oyakusalata, Emma, Pinchitano Basana, Ginichahama, then on the Ragasitakino. I think we can mandangalana the Akna, make a Ragasitak. Then on the Dueshitakino. A cat in Nagalana the Akna, make a Dueshitak. Kill are calling Iganagata Kusalata, I'm the Metra Tiodano. From Matapula, Mang Patakrela, and Balangin, no Ragas Takino, Neapoda Natano, I put that Dangalanoa, Manghebe Dangalanian Nea, Tekakin Padir, Natane, and Nit Nehe, Udaukarane, and Nit Nehe, and Balagin no Patakrela, Madastoni Rikshanekano. Etokotan Neapoda King giving it Pala, and then I turn hit the Sansu, on Hitana than on a Duesis Takino. Ekama Krami. Just only at the inheti dakino, then are Satya Sampajani Projano at Tinni, Api then he deches it in that the Mamma Tangalami, but a deches a lakwe checking out the Banina Gahana, Avega Shidi, Venakinika, Asatimat. If a Satimat Kena, him a winne, ya Elia, no Taman di Havalno, Tamanga hit the Havalno. Thorang on a deches it up me, Hatagan, to me, at the Kamatakin, the Gila, Matavera Dakala, Kila me poor Kusangan and ne. You know, then Balano, Tamangi hit the Hambal. Only then, Deshasitakino, Tana in the Dakino. The Tokota, 
ඒකේ මුලාවක් නැහැ ලස්සනට අර එතන තමයි සම්පජන්‍යයේ තියෙන්නේ හරියට වෙන් වෙන් කළා මේක ඇවිල්ලා රාග සිතක් මේක ඇවිල්ලා ද්වේෂ සිතක් ඔන්න මෙයා පටන් ගන්නයි දැන් යන්නේ ඔන්න දැන් ඇවිල්ලා ඉන්නවා දැන් නම් එයා මාව මුලා කරන්න හදනවා මං ඉතින් මුලා නොවී ඉන්නවා කියලා අන්නේ ප්‍රඥාව වෙන් කළා හොඳට දැනගැනීම විවිධ දෘෂ්ටි කෝණලින් දැකීම ඔන්න සම්පජන්‍යයේ කියන ගුණය අපි ගාව දියුණුලා තියෙනවා ඔය මට්ටමේ ඉඳින් චිත්තානුපස්සනාවට ගියාට කිසි වරදක් නැහැ ඉතින් ඒක කරන්නත් ඕනේ හරිම මේ නිදැල්ලේ නැතුව හිත හිර කරගෙන එකකටවත් එන්න නොදී මේ කළ වැඩක් නැහැ මට එන්න දිදීම බලන්න ඕනේ චුට්ටක් වෙලාව යයි ඉතින් ඒක ප්‍රශ්නයක් නැහැ අපි නිකන් අර එන සිතුවිල්ල නිකන් පාගලා දානවා නෙමෙයි ඒගොල්ලන්ට එන්න එපා කියලා තල්ලු කරනවා නෙමෙයි එන්න දීලා බලනවා මොකද දැන් ඇතුලේ තියෙන ඕනේ එක්තරා අන්දමක විශ්වාසයක් ගොඩනැගිලා මට දැන් මේක ගොඩදා ගන්න පුළුවන් මෙයාව හැන්ඩල් කරන්න පුළුවන් මෙයත් එක්ක සටනක් කරන්න පුළුවන් කියන ඒ විශ්වාසය අපි ගාව තියෙන්න ඕනේ එතකොට තමයි දැන් මේගොල්ලන්ට එන්න දීලම බලන්නේ දැන් තමයි ඇත්තටම හොඳට අර මුහුණට මුහුණලා සටනක් සිද්ධ වෙන්නේ අපි කා අනුපස්සනාවේ යෙදෙද්දී එච්චරම අපි මේවට යොමු කරන්න ගියේ නැහැ මොකද තාම අපි හැදෙන කාලේ එතකොට ඉතින් අපි සිතු වීඩි පොඩ්ඩක් පැත්තකින් තියලා කායට තමයි වැඩි අවධානයක් දෙන්නේ ඒකෙන් තමයි අපි ඉස්සරහට එන්නේ හැබැයි චිත්තානුපස්සනා ලෙවල් එකට ආවහම දැන් ඉතින් බයක් නැහැ එන්න දීලා බලනවා ඕන එකක් කාපු දෙන් මං ඉන්න සූදානම් ශරීරෙන් කියලා බලාගෙන ඉන්නවා මුකුත් දඟලන්න යන්නෙත් නැහැ හැබැයි දන්නවා මේ කවුරුත් ඇතුලෙන් නැ දැන් අපි කලින් කතා කරේ නන් සෙල්ෆ් කියන එක මේ අනත්ත සංඥාව කියන එක දැන් මේ වෑත් නැහැ මේ ලොකුවට මේගොල්ලෝ පෙන්නගෙන ආවට ඇතුලේ ගන්න දෙයක් නැහැ නිකම්ම නිකන් සිතුවිලි රාශියක් නිකන් ඒකට පැටලිලා තියෙන්නේ නිකන් පඹ ගාලක් වගේ ඇවිලිච්ච නූල් බෝලයක් වගේ ඉතින් මේවා ඔක්කොම ලිහයන් ලිහයන් යනකොට අන්තිමට ඇති දෙයක් නැහැ ඇතුලේ ගන්න කියලා මහා දෙයක් රාගයක්ය ද්වේෂයක්ය ඊර්ෂ්‍යාවක්ය කියලා මහා ලොකුවට ඒගොල්ලෝ පෙන්නගෙන ආවට එක එක ලිහයන ලිහයන ගිහම අන්තිමට නිකන් පුස්සත් තියෙන්නේ ඉතින් අන්න ඔය තත්වය තමයි පොඩ්ඩ පොඩ්ඩ අපි හඳුනගන්නේ ඒක වෙන්න වෙන්න ඔන්න සිතුවිලි නිකන් විසිරෙන්න ගන්නවා විසිරෙන්න කියන්නේ ඈත් වෙන්න ගන්නවා එන ප්‍රමාණය අඩු වෙන්න ගන්නවා සිතුවිලි අතර පරතරයක් ඇති වෙන්න ගන්නවා එතකොට අන්න හිත ටිකක් නිදහස් සිත හොඳට පැහැදිලි ඒ තරම්ම මුලා වීමක් නෑ එන එක වෙන් වෙන් වශයෙන් හොඳට හඳුන ගන්න පුළුවන් චිත්තානුපස්සනා හරහාම හොඳට විපස්සනාව වැඩෙනවා දැන් සමහරට ඔන්න සිතුවිලි දෙකක් අතර සැහෙන පරතරයකුත් තත් දකිනවා ඉතින් තොර යෝගා වචනේ තේරුම් ගන්නවා මේ සිතුවිලි කියන එක අත්‍යවශ්‍ය නෑ මේ හිතට සිතුවිලි වලින් තොර දැනුවත් බවක් තියෙනවා ඔන්න වෙනමම ඒරියා එකක් වෙනමම පැත්තක් ආධ්‍යාත්මික පැත්තක් අන්න ඒ යෝගා වචනයට විවෘත වෙනවා ඉතින් ඔන්න වගේ පැත්තක් තියෙන්නේ ඒ නිසා මේ මට්ටම මම මේ කියපු දේ මං හිතනවා තේරෙන්නේ නැති කියලා ඉතින් ඔය මට්ටමේ නම් ඉන්නේ කිසි වරදක් නෑ කරගෙන යන්න Dear Bhante Thank you for your guidance and sacrifices you make to make us guided. Kindly give us clarification on the following facts. Ragakkayo, dosakkayo, mohakkayo. Is this refers to nirvana? Also, akinchanya ayatana 2 is eradicating raga, dosa, moha. Thus, akinchanya ayatana relates to nirvana. Teruan saranai. Yeah, ragakkayo, dosakkayo, mohakkayo is the nibbana. so that is one definition given in the suttas but akin janyayatan is not nibbana but it's a kind of a platform where you can develop vipassana and uh, can use as a summit of perception what we call as sanyag so while being there you can allow things to happen you can re- ref- uh, reflect it what are the things available what are the different kinds of feelings available different thoughts available and you have to do some amount of vipassana there and then you may be experiencing the nirodha uh, kind of emptiness so while being in akinchanyayatana we can't say you are experiencing nibbana so it is that is against the teaching so different levels of concentrations are explained say for example first jhana second jhana third jhana fourth jhana and then the arupa jhana sakin chanya sorry akasana chayatana vinyana chayatana akin chanya chayatana neva sanya na sanya chayatana so likewise different concentrated concentrated levels are there so once anyone achieved whatever this so by being there you can do you can start reflections you can do kind of a radical reflection in order to uh, investigate the present moment investigate the present uh, state of mind so that leads to vipassana that that's the beginning or beginning of the 
turning towards the vipassana part development of the wisdom part and that helps to unassociate the mind disengage the mind release the attachment and to make it free so that may f- that kind of temporary freedom can be used to eradicate raga dosa moha so it's a kind of a gradual development you can't say that immediately you'll getting fully enlightened but it is a kind of a mo- uh, gradual growth so once that grow- growing happen that growth happen at the last stage it is mentioned okay the whole lust is gone all hatred is removed uprooted all delusion is uprooted and then we can say now you are in the full fledged nibbana <laughs> so <laughs> so it is happening i mean part uh, uh, gradually you can't say immediately i am got self enlightened i got immediately an arahant i mean that is that is not possible i mean uh, buddha mentioned no i mean there are kind of four cycles at least the first cycle you are approach in the three fetters in the second cycle you are sort of diluting another two fetters <clears throat> third cycle you are removing that two fetters and the fourth cycle only even the last five fetters being eradicated yeah that we can say as the full fledged nibbana where no any remainder of lust hatred or delusion I feel the normal meditation experiences is fine if conducted well. However, as a Dhamma teacher, can you please explain whether teaching middle path in Dhamma school is good to put children in correct path? Why not? Yes. <laughs> I mean, if you can teach the middle path, that is good. Actually, you can't immediately immediately teach the sort of say more difficult things then they they feel confused. I mean you can start with some basic things say teaching them the morality teaching them some kind of uh, say ethics starting with sila and then to develop um, say metta meditation loving kindness so have a certain amount of samadhi and then leads slowly towards the wisdom so sila samadhi panya so sila samadhi panya is the middle path so you are i mean more or less we are doing it i mean uh, even in the dhamma schools at the even now with uh, satipasala what bante dhamma jiva has started so to some extent so the children are uh, given the opportunity to develop these uh, skills so therefore you can certainly do start with the very uh, moral aspects teaching them the value of the morality and then giving some time to develop mindfulness given some time to develop concentration and if there is opportunity for them to develop the wisdom as well because wisdom part actually you need uh, some some time because uh, it is not the wisdom that we are talking that you are going through the typical education so what you are intellectually understand through science mathematics so that is not the wisdom that uh, here we are talking in the dhamma so the dhamma type of wisdom to have you need to develop mindfulness concentration first and then that develop mindfulness and concentration has to be used to uh, arouse wisdom so therefore you can uh, try to develop middle path for children yes teruan saranai garu swami in vahansa i observe that the recent collapse of the economy and loss of national security has had a large impact on my bhavatanha This fear for the countries, the peoples and my survival keep interfering with my meditation. I have had very little difficulty facing serious problems within brackets personal in the past. How do I let go of this bhava tanha at this time? May you attain nibbana in this life itself. Yeah, it's good. I mean, if you are looking in looking at looking at it in this angle, it is really good. I mean, we all have sort of uh, kind of imagination kind of a safety so i am looking forward my safety may i have a good life a uh, kind of a safe life a future safe future guaranteed future uh, so likewise this is what we are expecting that is why you are putting the government and all these things so we expect them to sort of assure my safety assure my uh, future but if they are not taking care of it then i'll be in trouble 
So as you are putting it differently, now, I mean, this is the, this is how the Bhavatana is operating. <laughs> I want to become a good person, I want to become a successful person, uh, I want to become a rich person. Uh, so likewise, this uh, subtle Bhavatana we all have. By the way, I mean, uh, these are very much the uh, way of the world. I mean, even Buddha has mentioned, say, when uh, you are dealing with your spiritual life, you need to have some kind of a, uh, assurance uh, about your food, your safety, uh, your clothing, medicine, etc., the four requisites for the monks. So then it is easy. Because, I mean, don't, they don't need to worry. But on the other hand, when things are difficult, say you are suffering with a kind of a severe illness, say you are suffering with a kind of a scarcity of food, and now scarcity of fuel. <laughs> so, I mean, when these are there, so they are bothering your mind, isn't it? So they bother your mind. So then it is, becomes kind of a distraction. And actually Buddha asks us therefore to use that as a sign of urgency. Now assume that we were doing well, no problem at all. So at that time, are you really practicing well? <laughs> because Buddha highlight, so don't, don't expect this completely satisfied, uh, proper ongoing situation be available forever. Careful that there could be a scarcity of food. There could be a scarcity of fuel. <laughs> fuel is not there in the Buddha's time. <laughs> uh, so we can add it like today. So there could be a scarcity of whatever the medicine. So that is the, that is the nature of this whole world. So therefore, the approach has to be very much like a preventative measure. So when things are doing well, when you are uh, healthy, when you are well to do, do your practice. Because when things are really in the difficult way, say you got really sick, difficult to practice. Say the country is fully collapsed, I mean you have nothing to eat, difficult to practice. So likewise, so when things are well, so rather than sort of enjoying and uh, very much like uh, ignoring the practice and simply going through the sensual gratification, so that is not the proper thing. So even when things are doing really well, so that is the Buddha asks us to use that as an opportunity for us to develop spiritually. So if you are taking that chance, and then when things are going wrong, you are fairly matured. You have some capacity to bear the things, cope up with things. So they are in a way life testing uh, situations. So that's why even on yesterday I uh, discussed, so as the last verse coming in the uh, Mangala Sutta, so after explaining so many other blissful or blessings, so Buddha add, puttasa loka dhammehi chittang yasana kampati asokam virajang khemang etam mangala puttama. Puttasa loka dhammehi. So this whole world is continuously subjected to these ups and downs vicissitudes of the world. So you can't stop it. Even the Buddha went through it. So you can remember, I'll just recall a couple of things. Say one time, uh, Buddha was invited to Veranja by a Brahmin called Veranja. So there he promised, okay Bhante, you come and stay with your monks and I am going to serve you during this whole three months, the Vasa season. But unfortunately, a kind of scarcity of food happened. So this Veranja Brahmin couldn't even come to meet the Buddha. <laughs> so he's the one invited for the Vasa period. You know, I mean, typically when someone is inviting the Vasa period, so he is fairly responsible to offer food and offer lodging and take care of the Sangha. But this fellow couldn't come even, even though he is the one invited. And no food at all. And Venerable Moggallana asked from the Buddha, Bhante, I have the capacity to go to another place and even to turn this whole uh, earth into a, uh, something nutritious and offer the meat, meals to a whole Sangha. Shall I do it? What did Buddha say? No, he refused. 
So instead someone else now came forward and he offered the food which is prepared for horses. Yavahal. Just, just the horses. And whole three months, Buddha and the Sangha were served with this horse food. And Buddha, I mean, patiently went through it. So that's a kind of a example that he has given. And on the other hand, uh, another time Buddha is going through the village Pindapata. At that time, uh, Mara, so he came disturbing. And he, what he did was, each and every house that Buddha approaching, so that people is with the kind of spell bounded by the Mara. So they are not giving anything to the Buddha. Because they are being spell bounded by the Mara, so no one is offering any food. So Buddha going one after the other, one, after, one house to the other house, ultimately empty handed. And then as a kind of a, a mischieving, uh, Mara is asking, hey, did you receive food? So it's just to, just to bully him. Uh, so then Buddha said, no, you did, did, you did it? No, I mean, <laughs> Buddha, no, what has happened? So how, I didn't get any, any, anything. But Buddha mentioned, but I am not unhappy. I, I have my own peacefulness, calmness in my mind. I can use that as a kind of a nutrition for myself. And uh, another interesting story. So, I mean, you can, uh, now today also there is a uh, question about the karma. There is one monk, uh, during one of his previous births, he again was a monk, and he actually avoided another monk's, uh, you know, requisites. Say some, some, now say a particular monk is uh, having so many uh, devotees, and they are sort of uh, serving, the, serving this particular monk. So this monk uh, actually become somewhat jealous of this situation, and so he uh, sort of divided. So as an outcome of that, so at this life, so he is actually a, again a monk and he is a disciple of Venerable Sariputta. And now he is going on arms round. Nothing received. Most of the time nothing is received. Empty, empty, empty ball most of the time. No food at all. And uh, now he approached the last day. Going to Actually, he became, a, uh, he became an arahant, anyway, <laughs> because that is a different, different karma, but there are other wisdom faculties, he, he worked hard, so he became an arahant, but still the karma is operating. But Venerable Sariputta, is a, uh, I mean, he's the teacher and he's the foremost in the Dhamma, and he knew that this uh, student is going to pass away today, and uh, and he asked maybe a kind of an area which is typically giving enough food and uh, to go on arms round. Even in that path, no food for this monk. And then he is coming back and he asked, I think I can't remember his name, Lohitaka or something, I can't remember. Losaka, Losaka. And now on this last day, so he asked, Venerable Sariputta asked, have you received food? So, without telling no, this monk replied, uh, still some more time is available. <laughs> so, it is then said, uh, so Venerable Sariputta quickly went to the palace and he got something and he offered the ball to Losaka Lo, Lo to eat. But empty ball. When, when Sariputta is holding it, it is filled with food. But when Losaka Lo is taking it, Empty ball. You can see how 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 come is operating. And then what the Venerable Sariputta did? So he hold the ball, asked him to eat. So I mean, these are the ways things have happened. So things things happen. I mean, as you said, it could be due to karma, but it could be due to various other reasons. We can't say everything happens due to karma. So likewise. So yesterday, some people. Uh, remembered about the Baminiti Asai. So at that time, I mean, a very difficult time, people are looting and uh, quarreling and uh, killing and all these things, and at the same time, the scarcity of food. It's a very difficult time, and monks have no food. 
and people start even killing each other for food <laughs> and uh, so this is how i mean the human realm will come to human realm <laughs> So, I mean, the whole human realm is like this. I mean, we can't say that we are going through suffering only in this era. So, we have went through suffering enough in all the previous eras. In the, and we may in the future eras as well. Because the human realm, the sensual realm is like this. You can't find permanent happiness here. <laughs> only temporary happiness. Temporary assurance. You can't have permanent assurance. Actually, when you were asking that question yesterday, so how are we going to guarantee? So actually, now say that we, are, we feel that we are in a good situation when we are working uh, in, a, say, higher story building and getting monthly remuneration and going to work by car, uh, have uh, many, uh, say, uh, subordinates working under you, how about all of a sudden the whole building collapse <laughs> because of the plane crash? What has happened in 9-11? Do you think that anybody thought, had it even, a, even, a, even a slightest thought in the Twin Towers in uh, USA in uh, September 11, 2001? That kind of a crash happened? Nobody, I don't think that anybody has even had a dream about it. So therefore, I mean, this is the human realm, this is the sensual realm, the conditioned world, so we don't know what's going to happen in the next moment. It's good, I mean, if things are doing really well, getting things are smooth and easy, that is good, that's a blessing. But not assured, can't, can't have 100% guarantee. Yeah, that's all, no? So we, we received only those questions, and if anyone has any other question, we have some more time. No question. Good. <laughs> okay, then uh, today actually we hope to have the Dhamma sermon at 4.30 combined with the servants of the Dhamma that they are arranging another session. And uh, we have, uh, so since that is separate session, we thought of uh, sharing merits right now. By the merits gained by offering the, sorry, breakfast dana was offered by Devi and Dharma Siri Jayavardhana to offer merit to their dear departed parents and all their departed relatives and to, and to especially to the whole of the suffering people in Sri Lanka. <laughs> and secondly, uh, by the merits gained by the offering, gained by offering the afternoon meal. Afternoon? Dawal <laughs> today, may we all realize path, fruition, nibbana soon. Also, to bestow merits to our deceased parents, relatives and whoever is in need of merits. May we also share merits with our teachers, uh, say meditation teachers and all the uh, <coughs> celestial beings. May they protect us, the Sangha and the Buddha Sasana. So these are the good wishes actually. We can transfer merits during the, uh, at the end of the uh, evening Dhamma sermon. Okay, then we'll conclude Dhamma discussion. Thank you very much for participation.